Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and TottyTalksCrafts.com. Today's video is about making the circle on the Tenerife lace loom that I designed and Dewberry Ridge looms makes and sells. This is a garland that I made from Tenerife lace, lace circles that I made on the antique lace uh, loom that my darling sister sent to me and it'll get longer as the whole lace making process carries on so eventually it will go on the Christmas tree or who knows where else. So to get started you're going to ha need to have made yourself the pin cushion for your loom and of course have ordered the looms from Dewberry Ridge Looms. The ordering information for them is all on my blog, uh, TottyTalksCrafts.com, and the link is at the end of the video and also in the notes below. And the link um, to that blog post takes you to all the, there's going to be a ton of links eventually that um, all go to the weave along for the Tenerife Lace Looms because there's a whole lot of wonderfulness all coming up. So I'm going to grab some crochet cotton. I've got, I like to work with two strands held together of crochet cotton. Uh, the number 10, although this one is a bit thinner, I've put those onto uh, empty spools and bobbins just because it's easy to work with them that way. Now I am going to pull out about six inches and that'll be the tail for the um, the slip knot that we're going to start with. Before we start you'll have to push your pins into the circle and just push them in halfway. Make a mark on uh, I find it's easiest to line it up with the corner using either ballpoint pen or permanent fine tip marker. And then exactly halfway around make a mark at the, uh, the pin directly across from the first one. You're going to put your slip knot onto the um, onto the first marked uh, take the threads between the second marked pin and the pin to the right of it. I need to pull this up a bit because I want the knot sitting right in the center. Going to take the, yarn, the crochet cotton around the pins, making figure eights all the way around, and the um, the tail is going to stay out here for now and you can tell that the um, the working strands are going to cover up that tail and the tail will come up and form a lock with the uh, working strands and that will make that secure. We will be uh, tucking the tail in under the loom so it stays out of the way so that after the motif is done you can use it for sewing the motifs to other motifs to or if it's not needed then I'm going to show you how to trim it off. I'm going to stick a pin here and that will secure the um, the working end. I want to tie a surgeon's knot. Whoops, I've got little random spools going madly off in all directions. I need to tie a uh, surgeon's knot. So under, uh, over, under, and through once, over, under, through twice. Pull down and tighten it up. And now just over, under, and through once. Now, next, we'll take and stick the pin down into the cardboard. Mm, that really was going, it's being quite stiff there. Okay, and I'm going to use my needle to just encourage the 
ends to snug in. Next, I'm going to find my, where did I put my, there it is, tape measure. And I'm going to measure out 32 inches of working strands. So here we go. Eight, 18, 31, and I say 36, but honestly, I'm cutting 37, even though I probably don't need it. So, next, I'll move the bobbins out of the way, and I'll take my needle, and the easiest way to thread your needle is to fold your thread over the end, slip it off, and then push the fold through the needle. Then pull up your ends and grab your thimble and push the pins down. They don't have to go absolutely snug to the, um, to the, ooh, that one bent. Ooh, that's not good. Okay, well, that one, that one's going to need to be replaced, so I will grab some other pins and fix that. I'll just finish pushing these down, and I'll go, I'll turn the camera off and replace that gibbled pin, because you want, you don't want that. Okay, so we're all pushed down except for the crunchy munchy one. And I'm going to go just turn off the camera and fix that, and I'll be right back. Okay, the, uh, the poor pathetic bent over pin has been replaced, so I'll just move my pin dish. Isn't that pretty? My sister-in-law gave that to me. Um, move my pin dish out of the way. So we're going to start at the outer edge. We do round one that is lock knots that go right around the center. Round two is in the middle. Round three is the outside edge. The, the method I'm showing you right now, okay, I'm going to go down here, is the easiest, most basic Tenerife lace, sorry, the camera's vibrating, is the most basic and simple um, method of making Tenerife lace. And this is the, uh, the uh, method that I'm using for all of the projects. There's a whole slew of projects coming up that are all going to use this very basic technique. And then after that, we will go into some more of the tr more traditional schmancy styles of making the Tenerife lace. Now, um, the, uh, the, I started um, at that first point and included the, um, the um, tail end of the slip knot. Ugh, do you ever have a moment when your, your brain just goes, hmm, no word there, sorry. <sighs> Thank you for that brain. Okay, so we're going to carry on around the outside edge. And what happens is that the lock stitch has to be, I, I broke the thinner strand, so I'm just going to work that in. I'm holding it with my thumb. Boy, today's full of surprises. And... The, to make the lock stitch is very easy. You just take your strand through, I mean around, and then the needle goes through. I'm going to do um, something that's very helpful. In the winter, here in Western Canada, the um, Relative humidity is just so low because, especially right now, we are suffering through a wretched polar vortex, which is just miserable. And so the relative humidity just vanishes. There is no relative humidity. It's just like dry. So my threads do get 
they need they get dried and so I have a lovely old bunnykins bowl with a piece of cloth folded and uh, dampened and you can dampen your threads and it will make it so much easier your threads won't tangle up and snarl up and break the way that one did at first I said with hope in my heart okay so pull up and lock at the center I think what I'm going to do is just I think you know what's up here and the um, I, this is all in the PDF that came with your looms so I think I'll just finish the other half of round one and come back when it's done and then do round two. Round one is done and I have taken the needle through the very first stitch to pull it up and that's going to lock round one. Next we're going to move up half an inch or about a centimeter and work round two. Round two is done exactly in the same way as round one starting going under two sets of loops and including in the first um, stitch the tail end from the slip knot. Go over your thread and hold down on your thread so it doesn't slip back too far on you. Move on to the next two and take your thread over your needle, pull up, move it into line, next two, over goes the thread, pull up, and lock. So that's all there is to round two, and that goes really quickly. You're going to find that the circles are so fast to make, it's slower for me while I'm explaining what I'm doing, but you'll find that when you're doing them and once you've got a rhythm and you're used to doing them, that the circle is the very fastest of all the motifs. It just really zings along. So I'm going to, I've done half of round two, I'll turn off the camera, finish round two, and come back when round two is done. Round two is complete and the needle is going through the first stitch to, to lock round two. I'm going to just pull that up. Now to work round three, we're going to work through the middle of each of the loops on the pin. So you're going to go into the middle, go over and I think I'll pick up that tail end for the f in the first stitch just to get that done. Now, okay, that's uh, just there we go. And once again, your thread goes over your needle. There we go. Camera up and pull up. And the first lock stitch on the edge is done. Pick up the half of the left hand of the right hand, go into the left hand center, thread over the needle, pull up. Working the round three all the way around. With locking stitch all the way around. So I think what I'll do is go and finish working round three, come back when it's done and show you about taking it off the loom. Round three is done. I'm trying to just stop the, the camera from vibrating on the end of the arm there. And what I like to do is take the needle and just push round three back towards the pins because sometimes it just needs a bit of moving about. And you can also do that with round two as well if you want round two to be slightly moved around. 
you can do that as well. Now we're going to pull out the pin uh, that was holding the tail in. I'm going to take the end out of my, um, let's go back up further so you can see better. There, I've taken the end out of my uh, needle. I'm going to do a surgeon's knot again here. One, two, pull down tightly, and once through, pull up. Keep your tails, um, your ends, and then all you need to do to release this motif is lift out your pin, put it, let the lace go free, and push the pin back in halfway down so that it is ready to go for the next motif. And you'll just do that all the way around and your, your circle will be free and there you go, the circle. A lovely motif that is so useful and we're going to be doing lots and lots with it. So please hit subscribe uh, to stay connected to the series. There's going to be quite a few videos. And also if you tap the bell icon next to the subscribe button, that will send you a note when there's the next um, video released. There's lots more happening. Oh my goodness, the gorgeousness that's about to come along. Woohoo! So, happy lace making. See you soon. Go gently and stay warm. <laughs>